Welcome back to Fenwick Money Matters. A global trend that has emerged over the last few years is that corporates are looking for more and more custom education offerings. That's to help grow their staff talent. So we're looking at how this trend is changing and how corporates can approach the corporate education in a smarter manner in studio. Still with me, Jessica Hubbard, Professor Wendy Ngomo from Vitz Business School, and then Sean Rosen, the Executive Director for Corporate Education at Gibbs. Thank you both for joining us. Um, so, Sean, I'll start off with you. Tell us about uh, the kind of the changes that are taking place when it comes to uh, the, the approach to corporate and executive education right now. Thank you so much. Uh, I mean, the first thing is just understanding what's happening in, in, in the corporate world, and that is, that is a dearth of skills. Uh, we've got younger people being promoted uh, quicker. Uh, we've got the complexities of doing business in a more globalized world. Uh, we've got technology, and, uh, and this is just competitive forces really all battling down our, 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 our companies. So they're really looking for accelerated development. Um, maybe I'll just touch on a few points. Really, leadership, getting people to execute better, uh, therefore on the strategy, managing their teams, exciting them around the vision, and, and then really building down core critical functional skills, mm -hmm. uh, which, which and Wendy and I were just discussing it, some of the challenges in our, in, our, in, our, in our secondary school system uh, uh, and having corporates having to, to kind of make up for it. Mm. Yeah, we're not even going to get into that, <laughs> into that aspect of the education debate. So, um, so tell us, Wendy, from your, I mean, from your side, I mean, what is, uh, what is the approach right now from Vitz Business School to adapt your programs to make sure that what you're providing is what corporates need? Right. I think first goes with the, the needs of the economy uh, because I think any business school wants to be engaged and be blocked into what those needs are. So corporate education has indeed taken off in a big way because uh, people are now addressing what those needs are. So on our side, I mean, we, we do like all other business schools perhaps in terms of customizing those programs um, because the basis of it anyway is to engage with those corporates, find out what are the key issues and what needs to be done. I think the luxury of developing curriculum in isolation as universities, that, that is gone. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, most corporates now are saying, let's partner, let's collaborate, let's think together. Mm -hmm. And I think anyway, that's the, uh, that's the future. Wendy, I mean, yeah. one of the things that seems to be an issue at the moment, yeah. or, or maybe it's that appears anecdotally to have changed, is that people no longer necessarily want a, p a certificate. Sorry, the company is less interested in somebody achieving a, a, a certificate, maybe an MBA course or, uh, or one of those high level. They, they want somebody that walks out with a set of skills I can use in the same year that I've, uh, I've assigned somebody to improve their finance for, fin for non-financial managers, as an example. Right. Yeah. They want them to be able to apply those skills straight away. Do you think that that is, is that a fair comment, that the interest is not so much in the piece of paper, but the skills that I can use right now? It, it, it actually goes with how you look at education as a whole, because if, if you train people just for functional uh, you know, skills and, and, and them being able to implement as they walk into the environment, chances are you're very short-sighted because you are solving a problem. Now, if you look at a, at, at a bigger um, education um, that we offer, whether it is MBA degrees or finance degrees or PhDs, you're now looking at a, at a long-term strategy because you're training individuals that can apply mi their minds in different scenarios. Mm. Whether um, they, you, you take them into banking, that finance ability, uh, that analytical ability still mm. applies. Whether they move from there to insurance, they, they're still functional in those kinds of things. So the economy needs both nevertheless. Mm. Mm -hmm. So you, you need those that you can quickly train, get the managerial skills, the functional skills that are required, they can be effective on the job now. Mm. But on the other side, yeah. you, you need something bigger than that. What are the functional skills, though, right now that are most in demand uh, from South African corporates and perhaps are those students coming from abroad? Um, great question. I mean, the market has changed you know, fundamentally in the last six months since, since Maricana. We're seeing it. Uh, things are getting tougher out there. So, so we, again, you know, the previous question around, you know, qualifications, knowledge, and that, that's vitally important and really the stepping stones. But, but to the question is, well, what can you do different in the place of work tomorrow, six months and, and two years down the line? And that's where corporates really, you know, coming into the customer, uh, uh, customer uh, education space. So what are those skills? Uh, finance, commercial acumen. Uh, a 
uh, sales, you know, speaking to your clients, really, you know, bring home the, that business. Uh, good operations, you know, how do you run an operation effectively and efficiently? And then this thing about understanding the whole business, taking people out of their functional discipline, understand how your decisions uh, affect the, you know, the bottom line of the business, both upstream and downstream. So mm -hmm. it's really that integration. And we're hearing a lot of, you know, one, one of an organization, one Anglo, one Sassel. And Sean, yeah. are you finding that you need to design courses or programs specifically to address needs on the continent that African leaders are perhaps lacking or African companies need uh, to be developing more in a more focused manner? So, so huge growth on the continent, both South African companies going into the rest of Africa, and we know the names, you talk about them all the time, as well as uh, emerging African multinationals. I just got off the phone with Ecobank, and they're looking at running a program through the uh, uh, 40 countries that they operate in. Do you have capacity? For, for those countries, or do they have to come to South Africa? So, so w Wendy will you know, concur that there's two kind of models. You, know, you can either do the suitcase academic and go into Africa. We've chosen a different approach to partner with three local business schools, Strathmore in Kenya, Lagos Business School in Nigeria, and the Cairo American School in, in Egypt. And uh, we're working collaboratively to share our resources to, to, and, and skills, really, on how you serve this market uh, across the continent. Mm -hmm. Partnership's the way to go. Um, because also it's, it's no longer a question of uh, you bringing some intelligence that doesn't exist somewhere. Business schools now, I think, are much more in an organized form. We, we have uh, the African Association of Business Schools. They are screened. Uh, everyone who participates there is a peer. The criteria is the same. So in a way, you kind of know if, you, if you're partnering with a school in Lagos, what level uh, of education is offered there. Mm -hmm. so, so that collaboration is important. But I just want to add what, what Sean said. One of the things actually we were discussing yesterday was some of those skills. And I think one of the things that's coming through very, very strongly is stakeholder negotiations and stakeholder relations, something we took for granted, particularly with the mining strikes and all. And people are saying, but we come out as managers, we don't know how to negotiate mm -hmm. uh, properly. So I just wanted to add so that. So how would you develop those skills? How would you go about mm -hmm. designing programs or mm -hmm. curriculums around stakeholder yeah. negotiations? Remember, you, you can do a generic program called negotiations. But now the, you need to contextualize these things. Mm -hmm. Because the mining industry on its own has got its own dynamics. Mm -hmm. So you need to be able to interact. And with are you customizing that yes. for South African environment? That's right. Mm -hmm. You have to customize it for, for the environment, for the sector. Uh, as well go as deep as that mm -hmm. because the, the issues at loan mean can be the same as at Anglo. I mean, there might be generic union matters that, that arise because of bargaining and all that. Yeah, yeah but, but there are certain things then you need to think about. Mm -hmm. What is it that you have to train that manager to understand when they sit across the table uh, with the unions, for instance?